Good afternoon and welcome to the latest edition of the Mortal Kombat franchise documentary. I'm delighted to be joined by the one and only Joel McHale, who voiced the character Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion Revenge. And I suppose, uh, Joel, first of all, um, I was speaking to TJ Storm, uh, a renowned sort of martial artist uh, in terms of uh, voiceovers, in terms of video games and stuff like that. And he was telling me a story back back in the early 90s. Uh, he was playing uh, on Las Vegas. He was playing an arcade sort of center. He was playing Street Fighter in the arcade. And he was only in his 20s. And he was having a game against some guy who was in a T-shirt and a hoodie. And he was bashing over and back and that guy uh, actually beat him to the pulp but it was no other than Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio uh, supposed to be a wizard as a street fighter in terms of yourself uh, growing up were you a sort of a fighting computer type guy did you like your Mortal Kombat's your street fighters or were you aware of that uh, growing up oh I, I kick Leonardo's ass on that game all the time uh, wait no I've never had the privilege um to try. Uh, no, yeah, I was, um, I always, always loved video games. Uh, my wife is very aware of that. Um, but I, you know, I, um, I, I followed all the, you know, like from Atari to, I, I had a Coleco, I had a Texas instrument that we just used for their version of Space Invaders. I mean, that, this is going way back, but, um, yeah. you know, when that, and when Nintendo came out, that kind of changed everything. And, and then of course, when the Xbox came out, uh, that changed it again. But um, how did I, I, I will say, I mean, I played, I, I went to arcades as a kid when you had to play, yeah. you know, you're dropping 25 cents a game. And in 1981, that was a lot of money. And I was, <laughs> I, I played Tempest and Dig Dug and Defender and Stargate and Qbert and uh, Frogger. I played all those classic games. I wasn't very good. Um, Galaga, I played a lot of, but I, you know, I wasn't great, but I, I really got, I, I, I played strangely, I mean, it's not strange, but I played a lot of, uh, I know that we're gonna talk about Mortal Kombat, but I played a lot of that in college. And- uh, in college. Great. Yeah. Um, we that's when the I, I went to college from 91 to 95 so yeah. um there was i played a lot of merc as well uh what else did i play 1942 i think so no video games have been and then of course you know in the modern era you know, i play call of duty and battlefield with friends i play Fortnite. uh so uh yeah it's i i'm one of these guys that would i buy all the games because i have a plan to play them I still haven't gotten through Red Dead Redemption, and I know I'm, I don't know if I ever will. I, I want to so bad, and then I want to play that is, uh, the PS4 Spider-Man game, but now the PS5 is out. So um, it's, it, uh, you know, I, I, they are a part of our, I, uh, they're a part of our, the fabric of our lives. But uh, my friend showed me this Reddit video of where video game basketball started and then 40 years later, what it looked like. And it is, it is the space race. It is the Wright brothers times two because to go from that to what it looks like now is just, I mean, my, my, my kid will be playing Madden and he, my wife will be, will get into the game to the point where she's like jumping up and down and rooting because it looks so real. So there's a, I'm, I'm sorry, I've talked so much. <laughs> I suppose, uh, Joel, in, in terms of, you mentioned sp uh, playing Mortal Kombat in college and uh, in terms of your memories. Well, in terms of fighting games, it was really hardcore back then. It was really sort of blood, sort of guts, sort of violence, yeah. uh, rare characters with sort of backstories, gruesome sort of fatalities. Was that the sort of intrigue about it, the sort of the blood, the guts, the... the numerous sort of these special type mutant uh mortal mutants that have all these special types of uh out of these world sort of moves that shoot ice and uh fire and everything like that well that's a good question i mean I, I think you have to look at it like baking a perfect cake or baking a perfect spaghetti carbonara where it's the it's the combination of everything because the gameplay is incredible. 
And um, that's I feel much like, you know, like Tetris is such a simple game because the gameplay is so good. And so Mortal Kombat figured that out, um, which so that's the first piece in my book. And then the, the world they created of all the different characters, the storylines, the gore was really innovative. And then there's monsters. So it's I think it's a combination uh, of all those things because when you get gameplay that good that's the huge draw and then you're just like oh i'm i identify with sub-zero or i identify with scorpio or johnny cage um so i think with a game like that it's kind of like sur- like that first year episode of survivor where you're like oh this is a whole new thing it's been invented and people are going to watch it for a hundred years so, so that's why you know, Mortal. I think that's why half why Mortal Kombat has, has flourished in the last. You know, like how long has it been around? Close to thirty years. Oh, it's going back nineteen nineties, so early nineteen nineties. Yeah. So, so I suppose that. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's just one of those things where they just knocked it out of the park and then continued hitting grand slams. That's a baseball and- analogy. I'll come up with some cricket analogies soon. They, uh, you know, they hit all the wickets in the first try. I don't know, is it? Uh, yeah, that's English. We, we, we're we not big fond of the fans of the cricket here in Ireland. <laughs> but uh, in terms of Joel, in terms of uh, the Morty combat as well, I suppose you mentioned that time in college, you were probably a movie goer as well. And the first movies came out in uh, 1995, the first Morty combat, uh, a martial arts sort of movie with Robin Shaw, and it went down to great sort of appeal. Now, the sequel, as we many know in terms of sequels, it probably didn't live up to the sort of same hype for anticipation. Did, did you get to taking the movies i know it's a long time ago now but oh i don't think i saw them in the theater Mm. Uh, at that point i was like you know artsy i was like artsy college student who was only seeing like tiny julianne moore movies and stuff so uh i was you know i was i was going to the uh definitely the art house cinemas back then so um uh, yeah, so I didn't. I, I I was into the games more than I was at that point in into yeah. the movies and um, the you know like now transitioning to what I did, but like I like when I got the offer for Johnny Cage, I was I was very impressed by the story. I was like, well, the story is great, and I always know a script is good when I read it like a like I'm reading a novel and I don't feel like it's a chore. And I'm like, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? And that's, that's one of the reasons why I responded to the script so well, because I was like, this is, this is great storytelling. So, um, and I felt, you know, it honored the world and then took wonderful, you know, like they're, they, they took the world and, and made a great narrative at it. Thank you. And I suppose, Joel, you mentioned there uh, in terms of uh, playing uh, Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat Legends, uh, Scorpion's uh, Revenge. Uh, when you got, when you sort of, when the script was put towards you and you saw the character, did you uh, think to yourself, well, I'm going to do a tiny bit of jog the memory here. I'm going to go back and watch maybe a movie or back and rekindle the sort of thing. Or did you have a fair idea in your own sort of mind that, uh, what you wanted to do with the voice of uh, Johnny Cage. For, you probably saw animations and, and drawings for him yeah. and what he looked like. Yeah, they definitely showed me the drawings in advance. And the character was already, you know, like it was very well drawn in the script. So I was very clear uh, on what he was going to be like. And what was so great in the script is that they balanced arrogance and cockiness and skill with insecurity and um like a question mark of like are these the best choices you can be making right now johnny cage and so that was really well done i didn't have to do you know because i knew what he looked like i knew because i had played the game so but you know when you start speaking out loud as this as this fictional character it's a whole different thing so they they let me uh, screw around a lot. And I, you know, in each scene, I would try to come up with other things that he might say and how he would feel at this point and, and 
whether it was, you know, a joke or whether it was something um, sincere. Um, so yeah, they let me improvise a bunch, but it's not like, it's not like I had to do much improving at all. I mean, they, they wrote really funny jokes and, you know, the scenes were, the scenes were really soft. That's how you, you know, like when you read these scripts, you, when you know where things are going, it's, it's like having a captain of a ship that is steering it in the right direction and you feel confident. So you're not, it's not all over the place. And, and they weren't kind of like, well, we hope we find it when the, when the actor shows up, that's, that's not what it was. They, they knew what they wanted. So I felt in very good hands. And Joel, we know about the Johnny Cage sort of character, this, the sort of egotistical sort of nature of his character and a brash sort of cockiness, that sort of, mm -hmm. uh, he's sort of sincere, but the sort of full, full of himself sort of arrogance that he sometimes has as well, the sort of character. In terms of the sort of a vice, ask, a vice artist grasping that sort of a tone to sort of come off that this fully confident sort of guy, is that sort of hard to portray sometimes when you have to try to start to balance that and you mentioned sincere moments as well well that is actually the luxury of i mean you can do this in scenes that are shot for as a person but um for voiceover you you know you can give it a, a bunch of different ways i mean i would go in there with like here's the plan that i have and here's where i think he goes and then the director's the director was really good and kind of steering it. So I, I, there's an initial thing, especially with the, I mean, he's a classic character, but me portraying him was a new thing. So I had to, so like we, in the first couple scenes, we were like, all right, are we kind of finding it? And uh, this, does this say, I would be like, does this sound like we're on the right track? Are we doing the right thing? And should we keep going? And should we, should I push it further? Should I pull it back a little bit? So you kind of, for those first few scenes, kind of like, all right, now we kind of know who he is and then we can kind of uh, start really sailing through it. Um, so so I guess uh, I guess the answer to your question is, um, yeah, it's a, you know, it was a, it was a group effort and I, I got, I was very lucky because they let me do, you know, they let me screw around, but they also knew exactly what they wanted. And I suppose, uh, Joel, you mentioned it was a voiceover sort of a, a project in terms of a movie. And we also know there was other guest star appearances from the likes of Jennifer Carpenter, who played uh, Sonia Blade, uh, to mention a few. Uh, were you are ever in sort of shooting boots opposite each other or ever brought in? Or was this, uh, was did you do all your pieces uh, from a certain studio or certain allotment uh, areas? Did you actually ever come across each other the other sort of character yeah we i think we tweeted at each other i think that's okay. the furthest we i have met her before and she's lovely um but i i did I, we never were i was never in the same room with a single actor uh okay. that's the, what that is usually how it goes i actually that is how it goes <laughs> okay. i have never been on an animated movie where we were in the same room doing a scene back and forth. That has literally never happened to me. And I suppose, uh, Joel, the Mortal Kombat fan base is huge. It's, it's probably legacy in terms of it's almost like James Bond is going for 30 or 40 years. And once you're associated with the franchise, uh, there's a sort of global appeal to it. It's all uh, the recent game sort 15 million copies worldwide um, in terms yeah. of... Um, fan base it's from argentina brazil uh, yep. south africa all over the world so when you get associated to a franchise like that and obviously to people are say, talking about joel McHale is new johnny cage or something like that it must be a sort of great sense of rapport because you'll always be associated with it because mortal kombat it seems is going nowhere and in the next 20 years mortal kombat will still be around and there'll be different incarnations yep but you'll be still part of the, the furniture in terms of that. So in terms of being involved in sort of projects that probably come and go, being involved with the, in terms of Mortal Kombat, you know that it, it's one of those sort of things you can tick off the sort of uh, wish book list because it's going to be around for a long time to come. Well, if they'll still have me, of course, I would, I would love to do it. And, you know, when I was offered it, it was... You know, my agents, it's one of the things where like, my agents were like, is this something you'd want to do? I'm like, yes, yes, it's what I want to do. 
I get to be Johnny Cage? Absolutely. Please let me play Johnny Cage. It was like, like when I got to be on the X-Files, my agent was like, is this something you're interested? I was like, yeah, I'm interested. I'll do it for free. Whatever you want me to do. Uh, so yeah, I got to, you know, you're stepping into, you know, it's different when, you, when you're when you part of something that is, you know, like something like community that's, you know, you we started it, you know, Dan Harmon hired us and we hopefully we're going to stay on the air. Um, but with this, it's like, don't screw this up, Joel, because people love these characters and they love this game and, you know, don't fuck it up. And that's how I feel with that. So I feel like I'm given this gift and to, uh, to, to be, to be able to play Johnny Cage. And, and I was truly honored. Uh, and you know, my parents didn't see the movie cause it's way too violent, but, um, but you know, my kids loved it and all that. So, um, I, you know, I was honored. They, they know the game more than they know. Now they know these movies, but, um, but, uh, but yeah, I was, I, I would do it again in a New York minute. Yeah, and I suppose you mentioned there about kids and I suppose teenagers and adults that Mortal Kombat is sort of known that in terms of, I know you've appeared in sort of many shows and many sort of videos and great outdoors, but in terms of a lot of TV series, but there's a certain demographic that probably know Mortal Kombat and say, hey, weren't you in Mortal Kombat? Or did you, did you vice in Mortal Kombat? And you might have appeared in sort of real blockbuster sorts of things, but in terms of certain generation, Mortal Kombat is probably a thing that is annual, yearly. The, these blockbuster games come out year after year after year. So to be associated with that, uh, you, may, you might be like saying that it's a great achievement, but you might be saying, hey, I play this role in this other TV series, and they'd be like, but I, I Mortal Kombat, so... Yeah. In terms of I that, to, yeah. I'm going to have to carry it like wear a t-shirt that says I am the voice of Johnny Cage on both sides and then just have like my phone ready at any moment to be like would you like to hear it because I've got a sample of it and so uh yeah I should just be prepared to play it out loud to people and I suppose, uh, Joel, I suppose lastly for me, I suppose why we're doing this documentary, there's a new Mortal Kombat movie coming out in uh, January 2021. Uh, yeah. Big expectations for it, big excitement. I know Louis Tan is in it and a few other prominent sort of actors as well. And hey, Louis Tan actually, is in an inter interview, I suppose, one a private interview, he's uh, he mentioned there he had sleepless nights over how sort of, adult it was in, in terms of its gruesome sort of nature and, and more yeah. along the lines of the dark night and uh, the joker in terms of that sort of culture and do you think that's the way it, Mortal Kombat's going back to his fan base it, it seems like this would be more accept, more acceptable now to do this type of movie in 2021 back in the 90s probably a bit more campish that, in, in nature those movies because you weren't allowed in terms of what was allowed back then but teams of people are more open to more dark or more sinister movies seems to be the big go now and I suppose Mortal Kombat will fit nicely into that bracket Absolutely and they should definitely honor the level of violence that the game exists at or people are going to not be interested uh you know and i think in the 90s and that sort of the the less gore, uh, gory and less violent was more of some executive or powerful executive saying we need to make this appealing to everybody because you know it's just a video game and that person did not understand that 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 this the, this game, you know, when they get to levels like this, it creates its own folklore. And the games are so good and they're so perfectly engineered and realistic that you've got, they got their work cut out for them because it, it should be violent and it should be, and it should honor how that level that the game exists at. But the other thing about the game is, is that it's super fun and it doesn't take itself, like they have Johnny Cage in it, and which allows for comedy. So it's not just dark for the sake of being dark. It's dark because the world they created is, is dark, but the characters aren't all just downcast and pissed and wanting to kill everybody. They, you know, they, they, have, they have different narratives and you have to show the dark with the light. And so the good should be really good and, and the evil characters should be really evil. So that's the only way that this thing, you know, I am back that's how I think about it because of the folklore created but yeah I'd be a, I'd be terrible at directing it. it would look like shit 
<laughs> on on that note, uh, Joel, a uh, pleasure talking to you this evening. Uh, really, of your sort of current memories of uh, playing, uh, well, I suppose current, uh, I suppose 2020 is very current, uh, uh, voicing the role of Johnny Cage in uh, Mortal Kombat uh, Legends, uh, Scorpion's uh, Revenge, and uh, no doubt uh, many more projects for you in the pipeline. And please, God, going forward, more Mortal Kombat projects as well. Uh, uh, touch wood and uh, Joel uh, pleasure talking to you this evening and uh, in these times to you and your loved ones uh, stay, stay safe and stay well and uh, keep keep a positive nature. Cheers Joel. Thank you, and uh, try not to have your heart pulled out by Scorpion anytime soon. Cheers Joel. I won't I promise. Thanks Ben. See you